know too much about exactly this time in particular with Seawolf. Um, what I can tell you is this guy is a players champion. He's pretty young still, and he's almost won two tournaments this past year, right? right. So he's on a hot streak, and perfect timing going into the FedEx Cup. Uh, I can't tell you in particular what Claude and Seaman are working on right now. But what I can tell you is that when he was here, and maybe in the last few years, I think Claude, I think Si Wu has done a lot of tinkering. And I think what Claude has done is made him a better player. Uh, hitting shots uh, in practice, maybe playing more on the course, uh, hitting those shots, not worrying too much about technique or positions, getting him to be an elite player by relying on that talent that won the Players' Championship. Just to talk about his trace, I mean, I always say I don't like averages. No one fits to an average. Everybody fits within a range. And then here's Siwu with his uh, fitting rate to an average. In my slideshow that I do, webinars or in-person seminars, um, we always say about 70%. Uh, it would be around the correct amount of pressure load to the trail side. Um, at some point, backswing with an iron, and there he is at 70. And Chip, if you could play it forward a little bit. So it went to 71, and you can see he's still completing his backswing. Again, another hallmark of elite-level golf. His center of pressure is moving forward before the completion of the backswing. So in other words, his highest amount of vertical pressure on the trail side happens in the backswing, and then he starts interacting with the ground from a vertical pressure standpoint underneath that lead foot. Um, again, I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. Great players get pressure on the lead side sooner than poor players do. And if you're going to do that, you can't wait till the top of your swing to achieve it like so many am. Again, if, if that advice worked, I'm fine with the advice. But they wait for the top of their swing, and then they're going to get forward, and that's not what the best players are doing. That club is now transitioning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's moved. Uh, can you send them to the very top chip again? So let's say... Okay, that club has moved three, four inches, maybe. All right, now I'll go ahead. Right. Beautiful and perfect. So peak velocity right there. And uh, that club's probably moved about four or five inches in transition. And he's already ramped up that vertical, uh, or I'm sorry, that lateral. So that will be his, the fastest he moves towards the target. And that will start to slow down, which will allow him to rotate. The center of pressure right here. Again, club has transitioned three, four inches. He's already 70% on his lead side and continuing to move forward. Now he'll get more into the heel. So you've seen the lateral slow down, the ramping up of the rotation, then that starts to dissipate, and then the vertical through impact. It's amazing. And it's beautiful to watch. It's beautiful, it's beautiful to watch. It's a beautiful trace. It's a beautiful swing to watch. Yeah, it's, uh, again, you guys know <laughs> You guys know what you're doing because not only is this a beautiful swing to watch, but it's a beautiful swing to measure. It measures as, as, as crisply as it looks, mm -hmm. you know. But what, what, how can amateurs, people like me, get what does my swing top to try to get? Huh. How, how do I get to? It's gorgeous to watch, and the trace is beautiful. So, what, what's our go ahead, Ryan? Get there faster. Well, I would say, you know, I'm a TPI guy when it comes to this, you know. There's not, there's not a particular swing that you, need to model, that you need to model. What we need to do is find your particular model that suits your body, right? So we need to take you through the, the screens, see how your body works, and then find a model. So let's say you're a specimen, right? You're an athlete. Oh, she's obviously a specimen. Right, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Then maybe we find you an athletic swing, like an L read, right? Right, and then you measure her up against you, right? And if you're not, let's say you have some injuries or limitations, and maybe maybe we can work around it, but maybe we have to fix it first before we get to a screen or a signature that looks like that, right? Yeah. So I'm very hesitant to provide one prescription that fits all. So for me, I do not scale. I always scream when I try to find the right swing for you. And, and I would say when it comes to technology, I'm asked about certain players, which is fine. I mean, we, we could 
we could have one of your Floridian margaritas here and talk about individual players. But if, but if, but if I'm a golfer, I would want to know what they all do. By the way, that list is shorter. And if they all do it, then we all have to do it or we all have to teach players to do it. Right. Again, that's why I, I talk about pressure in the lead side so much. Um, there, there is uh, the, the higher the handicap, the more that they struggle with that. And all these players demonstrate it, albeit in their own way, but they all get pressure in the lead side sooner rather than later. Right.